Welcome to Buffoon of the Week, where we scour last week's news and current events to find people who said or did something so unbelievably stupid that we just have to let you know about it. So we nominate the biggest offenders and let you vote in our poll for your favorite by clicking on the I in the top right corner of the video or by leaving a comment in support of your favorite fool. Last week, you voted, you commented, and you picked New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy as Buffoon of the Week. Which goes to show you, saying that the Bill of Rights is above your pay grade is not something people want to hear. Before we get to having too much fun with this week's nominees, I wanted to give all of you a very quick thank you for helping us reach 100 subscribers in less than one month. Incredible! Keep those likes and subscriptions coming. In fact, this week, let's see if we can break that 40 like mark again. As to the nominees, there were so many to choose from that we decided that we need to give some honorable mentions. First, a tip of the old puffle cap to past buffoon of the week, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. Last week, he created a coronavirus snitch line for people to report on neighbors leaving their homes. You can imagine that did not go over well with New Yorkers as responses from outraged citizens came in ranging from obscene photos to Hitler memes. It got so bad that New York City had to shut down the line. He was also shocked to find out that prisoners released from Rikers Island because of the coronavirus were reoffending. Classic de Blasio. We also have to recognize a plethora of wannabe buffoons, like Republican strategist and CNN useful idiot Anna Navarro, who said on TV that illegal immigrant labor on farms limits the spread of the coronavirus. I'd love to see the science behind that. Shout out also to America's favorite economist and science fair winner, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for encouraging people not to return to work once the pandemic subsides and for celebrating the oil market crash. Because lasting unemployment and further economic downturn is exactly what we need in these times. Kudos also go out to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for showing off her stocked freezer of goodies on late night TV while everyday Americans struggle to feed themselves. Yeah, all that happened in the space of a week. And let this sink in. These are the ones who didn't make the cut. But you know who did make the cut? CNN fraudster Chris Cuomo and madcapped mayor of Las Vegas, Carolyn Goodman. Let's show you why. CNN's Chris Cuomo is this week's first nominee for so many reasons but primarily because, in what can only be described as ballsy, Cuomo used his CNN show to present his so-called emergence from his self-quarantine in the basement of his home after being cleared by the CDC of having the coronavirus. Cue the triumphant music. Here is the official re-entry from the basement, cleared by CDC, a little sweaty, just worked out, it happens. This is what I've been dreaming of literally for weeks. My wife, yeah, right. <laughs> she was cleared by the CDC. She doesn't have fever, she doesn't have the symptoms anymore, more than seven days from her quarantine. We're still a little scared, so I'll just give you one of these. 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 Bella has, of course, taken the video. Did you check out the underwhelming reaction from his kids? Hey, guys, daddy's home. Yeah. In their defense, maybe they'd be a little more excited if this happy homecoming wasn't staged. Come on, guys. Cuomo's emergence, air quotes, is the biggest lie since another guy called Fredo let slip that he'd been to Havana with Johnny Ola before. We never met. Johnny Ola. Pleasure. You see, eight days prior, it had been reported that Cuomo was spotted in the Hamptons with his wife and children by a bicyclist who noticed that Cuomo wasn't exactly keeping social distancing from his family. Cuomo responded so angrily to this bicyclist that he ended up filing a police report for harassment. Cuomo even complained about the incident on his own radio show. I don't want some jack loser, fat tire biker um, to be able to pull over uh, and get in my face and in my space and talk to me. I don't want to hear it. I knew it was you, Chris. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. And we haven't even mentioned 
that Cuomo's wife also caught the coronavirus, surprise, surprise, and admitted to taking bleach-enriched baths that made America collectively say, Oh, dear God, TMI, Christina, TMI! For further reaction, we turn to another YouTube creator with a brand new channel whose pronouns we haven't quite figured out yet. It's the non-binary, female, asexual, homosexual robot created to teach humans tolerance and love by constantly reminding us what racist, fascist, homophobic scum we truly are. Oof, there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. So please give a warm welcome to social justice warrior, Karen. Hi, this is Karen with my commentary on the nominee for the buffoon of the week, Chris Cuomo. Chris said that emerging from the basement had been what he was dreaming of literally for weeks. Yes, Chris, I got you. Nobody can understand the suffering of being isolated in a multi-million dollar basement for weeks while also having to confront a bicyclist in another town. This is not the end of this. You'll deal with this later. We will meet again, yelled Chris at the bicyclist after being asked about breaking quarantine. Now when we know that Chris possesses the ability to be at multiple places at once regardless of his physical location, the bicyclist should prepare for Chris Cuomo emerging from his own basement. On the other hand, it is unsure whether we will see Chris Cuomo ever again because as you can see in the video his wife and kids weren't very excited about seeing him, but who knows how many takes of this totally spontaneous reunion they had to endure. His family may have already got used to not seeing him and realized what an ass he is. Chris even said that his wife is stronger than him so chances are that she will lock him in the basement permanently. Um, yeah, uh, thanks Karen. Wow, when you trigger a social justice warrior robot, there must be some crazy buffoonery going on. Like what you've seen so far? Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, leave us a comment as well because we read every single one of them, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. This week's second nominee is Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman for her, well let's call it unconventional line of thought about opening up her city. Last week, Goodman sat down with CNN's Anderson Cooper and really no words I can offer can do what she said justice. Luckily, we have plenty of clips. So you don't believe there should be any social distancing? You don't believe of that this is I a... Of course I believe there should be. Of course. I'm okay, a How rational. do you do that in a casino? That's up to them to figure out. I'm, I don't own a casino. I don't know anything wait about a minute, building Wait a minute, a wait a minute. I'm sorry. You're the mayor of Las Vegas. And yes. you're calling, you want casinos to be open, even though you have no authority, thankfully, yes. over casinos. But yes. you, you say open them up, but you have no responsibility about how that would be done no, no, safely. No, you're blurring. No. On testing and contact tracing? Because in order to open businesses, every scientist says that, that is essential. I don't have that. Well, no, that's for our scientists. And the whole thing is, is fact. No. Truth but you're, validated right, fact, you're, data. Right, fact, you're calling for businesses to reopen. Every yes. scientist uh, and person you know, who looks at this says, what we really need on to do that is more testing wait, wait, and wait, more you're contact every, tracing. Th that, no, that can't work. We're not getting the truth. And I know over the years, going back to 19, so the 1950s with the atomic bomb, don't worry about it when you're <sighs> testing in Nevada. You'll all be fine. Take a shower. The reality the, is... There's a, a Chinese researchers have shown uh, how this virus spreads. And I just want to put up Ooh, for our viewers... I just want to put up for our viewers. This is a, a restaurant. Anderson, you are tough. <laughs> no, I'm not talking. Just to China. This isn't China. Yeah. This, this is, is Las a... Vegas, Nevada. Wow. Okay, that's really ignorant. This is a restaurant, and the that's yellow circle. To say that's an ignorant, that ignorant statement. This we learned from history. Right. We've had Ebola. We've had the West Nile. But, we've right. had polio. We've had these. Horrific, None of those were as painful. infectious in Las Vegas. I mean, you didn't have people with Ebola on a casino floor. You know what, if you well, did- Well, we don't know it, that. Well, yet- yeah. Her mind died from West Nile because the swimming pool on the next property was filled with mosquitoes and the people who had abandoned right. the house left the pool full. So we I, live I, with this. This is part I, of I, life. Just as mayor, the aren't challenges. You working on the floor who are the ones who are going to become infected uh, and potentially well, die. No, you're talking disease. I'm talking life. 
I'm talking life and living. These are people okay, who have had to no abandon. Well, it maybe doesn't to you. It does to us here in Las Vegas. Saying that the numbers have been what they are. How do you know until we have a control group? We offer to be a control group. Anybody who knows anything about statistics knows that, for instance, you have a vaccine. You're, you're offering you the, real the vaccine. citizens of Las Vegas to be a control group to see if your I theory on social distancing no, works no, no, or doesn't no, work. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Don't put words in my mouth. You just said, said we'll said be a control offer, group. Excuse me. What I said was. I offered to be a control group, and I was told by our statistician, you can't do that because people from all parts of Southern Nevada come in to work in the city. And I said, oh, that's too bad because I know when you have a disease, you have a placebo that gets the water and the sugar, and then you get those that actually get the shot. We would love to be that placebo side so you have something to measure against. So all you, the data and You want to get the placebo. You don't want to get the actual. Well, no, not. the group who gets the placebo, by the way, usually gets the short end of the stick. Um, well, you don't know. How do you know when you're Mayor, in part of let that me just group? Say, you are. Mayor, <laughs> Mayor if, if. I mean, I love watching our people here. They're so careful. And even as we have, uh, we work every single day. I have not missed okay. a day. And anybody who is in or comes into the office that needs an appointment or has an issue, they all are with their masks on or we always enforce social distancing. And the office is absolutely pristine uh, with, ger with germs. You're talking free. about your office. Uh, well, hopefully everything in the building, we shut down the lot. You know, now that I've watched it all back, she seems so level-headed, doesn't she? What a train wreck. Goodman left the normally cool and collected Anderson Cooper incredulous. Let's hope that if Goodman does indeed get her way and casinos in Vegas all open up next week, that whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Hey, don't forget that Buffoon of the Week is all over social media. So when you're online, make sure you like us on Facebook, you follow us on the Twitters, and go on over to Instagram and like us there too. But the most important thing you have to do is remember to subscribe right here on YouTube. So much buffoonery to get to, it's overwhelming. It's in moments like these that I'm glad that we can turn to our trademark pending Sharpton Scale of Buffoonery to sort things out. First, we can rank each nominee on a scale from 0 to 100 by comparing their buffoonish nature to the only known perfect buffoon ever recorded, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Then, we can assign a value of buffoonish magnitude to each buffoon nominee's actions, which is measured with our custom unit of measurement, the Sharpton. So break out your gloves and masks. These high levels of buffoonery may be contagious. Chris Cuomo has been on the buffoon radar for some time, which ups his personal score considerably. But even for him, staging fake news is a new low. The incident with the bicyclist wasn't even his first break of quarantine. He was seen dancing in his daughter's TikTok videos while he was sick. What did he expect to accomplish from this stunt other than complete and total hypocrisy? Now, he is the poster child of fake news. That's why Chris Cuomo is a buffoon with a personal score of 84 and his hypocrisy rates 153.9 gigasharpens. We hit the jackpot of buffoonery when Carolyn Goodman went on national TV and gave a political interview that was the equivalent of yelling Leroy Jenkins at the top of her lungs. It's almost like looking at a caricature of a politician. The scariest thing about this? Goodman's a three-term mayor who got over 80% in her last election. But in all seriousness, the possible ramifications of Goodman's buffoonish statements is downright scary. So Goodman rates a 76 personally, which would have been higher if her national profile had been a little higher, but her interview gets an earth-shattering 347.1 gigasharptons. By far, two of the biggest buffoons we've ever had on the show. But only one can win! And it's in your hands now. Who you got for Buffoon of the Week? Tell us in the comments and vote in the poll right now. Wow. That was the longest video we've ever made. But when there's so much buffoonery going on, you can't help but to document it all. 
So thanks for hanging with us through the whole video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check us out next week right here on Before the Week.